Well, good day there, crew. Saltbush Benny here, kicking around the nursery for the afternoon. Uh, we're just setting up one of our transplanters to go out to a property for a planting job in the next couple of days. So I'm going to do a quick little tutorial here on setting up our one of our planters. Uh, this is mainly for the producer who asked us to help him out and show him what it was all about and how to get it running. And so we'll do this quick little video as a bit of an overview of how to put the planter on the tractor and uh, how to operate it and make sure nobody ends up dead uh, because of um, ill-fated equipment operation. So I'll start out. So it's a pretty basic machine. Originally it was a vegetable planter uh, that we imported from America and we've modified it to put this tank stand on it here uh, that you can see up above me as well. And that allows each plant to get an injection of water as it goes into the ground uh, as we plant it into the paddock. So I'll start at the front end, which is always helpful. So we're using our trusty forklift as a tractor substitute at the moment. And I've got that linked up very safely with just a chain under the three-point linkage, basically. So three-point linkage on your tractor. So here's your bottom two bars, one and two across the other side. This third point here is for a disc attachment that we don't really use that often anymore. And then our third point is up here. So this is where the adjustable third arm will go on the tractor, uh, all that above the tank. To all you enthusiastic tractor operators out there, when you've got your window open, don't let the tank hit your window. They shatter really well. So you've got that linked up. You'll use this top link to adjust some angles on the planter as well. When you're traveling along in the ground, this bar just along here needs to be running parallel with the ground as you're going along. So nice and level, too high, and you'll upset things at the back, too low, same deal, it doesn't run very well. The other critical thing when operating the machinery uh, in the ground is to make sure that there's some bars just here on our drive wheel. And at the moment, these are at a pretty serious angle in the wrong way. These need to be level the whole way across. I've just picked up a nice blob of grease. And so that allows the planter to sort of float and pivot. This is the main pivot point off the planter as well. This is also another reason why people should not travel on the planter when it's in the air. Pretty much the entire weight of this back section, which is a fair bit of overhang, is reliant solely on this pin and this little chain. It's engineered enough to support what's on there, but not two people sitting on the back of it. So when you get to the end of your row, it's very important to stop, get the people off the back, then lift it up and away you go. Also very important too to not turn whilst in the ground because that will bend the planting shoe. We'll move a little bit along a bit further to creature comforts. So these are your two seats, one and two. So two people sit there facing backwards going the other way. And then you have your trays in front of you as well. So this is where the plants will sit. So they come in a box. There's about 300 of these seedlings planted in a, uh, packed in a box and that is where you'll feed from into the centre row. So as we go up, we'll take up a bit of a position loosely on the planter, and we're going to have a look at the driving fingers. Now as our drive wheel at the front rotates, we'll come along and these will go into the finger very easily. You need about a three finger spacing to allow the plants to be deep enough into the ground. Now I'm going to turn our drive wheel, which I'll give a spin around and give you another look at. So this is our big drive wheel at the front. And as that rotates, it'll move our fingers along. I lost my camera angle. Sorry guys. There we go. What's going around? Maria's helping out. I'm traveling down. And each time it goes around and down, a plant will go in. So that's a pretty loose general de demonstration of it all. As the plant goes around, it'll slowly come out down the bottom there. And then these press wheels at the back will pull in dirt to get it going and seal that plant in the ground. The other important then feature, this is our water system here. So this will travel up and down, giving that plant an injection of water as it goes along. Our tank's empty at the moment, so nothing's coming out. But that will open up and down to give an injection into each plant at the base of the roots. And then this is the shoe. 
So this is what opens the ground up and creates a nice furrow for the plant to travel along. Now as our plants go down into the shoe, it's very important that they're coming down, travelling along like so, and then as they turn, it's important to get the tip of your root just here level with the bottom of the shoe. Otherwise it's going to sit crooked on the furrow too deep and it'll be bent over like that and the plant won't grow very successfully. Not deep enough and it's not going to get grabbed by the press wheels and it will just flick out the back and lay on the surface and dry up and die. And there goes your investment wasted. So just make sure you've got the plant hanging out far enough that it's actually coming out and being collected by the shoe very successfully. How far? <clears throat> about there. Mm -hmm. Now otherwise, that's about the long and the short of it guys. So again, going in at the top, putting them in, getting that good sort of three finger spacing. And then that'll travel down along it goes. Again, just those quick safety reminders, please do not ride on the planter when it's up in the air and make sure you do not turn the machine when it's in the ground. Get to the end of your row, stop, get everyone off, then lift it, turn around and away you go. And then at the back here as well, if you need a little bit of extra weight, there's a little uh, 20 litre drum ring holder as well. So they'll add extra weight to the press wheels to keep that down in the ground. Pretty simple operation. Uh, if you do have any questions or queries, give me a hoy, stick some comments on or whatever. But that's about it. You can see where the tank gets filled up at the front and you're away and off and racing. So that's the adventures of all our saltbush planting and how we get our seedlings into the ground. So yeah, give us a call, come and check it out and uh, we might see one of these on your place one day. Have a good one guys and we'll catch you on the next one. Good, very good. Pretty good little. Okay.